You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 18th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where the Springfield Park Board just voted unanimously to change the name of Stephen Douglas Park to honor someone more fitting, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. I'm, I'm holding out for Ray Bradbury, but I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> I think they're going to go yeah. with... Lincoln Land Park or something like that. Yeah, or... or nice well, Barack Obama Park would be nice. Fred, Fred, you only uh, get the wood-burning kid out at one S. It's Frederick Douglass Park. There you go. Um, I'm, uh, I think MacArthur Park is, is too subtle. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> They'd have to have rained-on cakes everywhere all yeah. over the park. That's the pro- that's well, well, dating we have, us a lot. We have a MacArthur Boulevard that's named after yes, we do. MacArthur. So, you know, it's and that, that's the next to go. But you know yeah. what? Uh, there are people, of course, all over town who are freaking out because this is tr- Trump land and, you know, assholes are everywhere. But the Park District is a pretty mixed group of people, and they voted unanimously, said no. And now they're just trying to figure out a fair process for determining who will be honored by this patch of green grass that nobody up until today gave a shit about because nobody right. cared which Douglas. Is it Oliver Wendell Douglas? Sure, why not? That could be, you know, Green Acres. Why not? So <laughs> that's that's how it should be. You know, you're, you're like, yeah. oh, yeah, this this is kind of outdated and it kind of sucks and it honors the wrong person. So let's change it. Everyone's like, OK, that's good. Let's move along. Yeah, let's do that. Let's change it to something else and then yeah. we'll be done. Yes. I think Steve Schmidt called you out this week, Drift Glass. He did. He didn't name names. But it was real clear um, who Steve Schmidt was talking about. I think so. Steve Schmidt appeared on Anna Marie's uh, Cox's podcast, which is part of the Crooked Media podcast empire. And uh, she interviewed her friend, and she's friends with him and is, is clear with, about that with her friend Rick Wilson and Steve Schmidt. And after, it was an abbreviated version, after about 15, 20 minutes of them talking about how awesome the Lincoln Project is and how amazing it is and how wonderful it is and so forth, she actually asked the question, <laughs> the question that I would ask. Well, I'll just read it to you. Um, I covered the McCain campaign, she said, so I know exactly what Steve Schmidt's contribution to the Republican Party has been. But this is a subject of constant discussion on the left about the never Trumpers. And I'm just curious what you think of that. The fact that there are people who really want to hold you responsible for basically because you helped create the modern Republican Party. You set the stage for what's happening now. And basically, Steve, what would you like to hear? What would you like to say? Now, um, you know, there is a middle road you can take into this question. This is a question that Stuart Stevens gets asked a lot because the title of his book is called It Was All a Lie. He's willing to say, yeah, the Republican Party has been on this racist road for 50 years. Now, he uses a lot of ducking and dodging to burnish the reputation of George Bush and talk a lot, a lot about how the country would, would have been wonderful under Mitt Romney, and a bunch of other stuff that is is somewhat exonerating. Like I was a, I was, I was a campaign guy, not a policy guy, but he's pretty upfront that my party has been a racist party for half a century, and right. this is and not. He, and his his culpability for that is yes, I should have known. I I was focused on winning elections, on winning. and when I won election, I figured I was doing a good job. So that. Yeah road is available. Mm -hmm. And and Mm -hmm. it is also a road paved by Steve Schmidt's fellow Lincoln Project employee or volunteer, Mm -hmm. however they're arranging to pay people or compensate them for their time. Um, It's out there. And Stuart Stevens has been on, I don't know, 25 podcasts. I've listened to 20 of them, I'm sure. And it's all the same six stories, but it's very clear. He takes responsibility. I'm thinking, well, Steve Schmidt, if he had a modicum of personal responsibility in his in his DNA, uh, he could speak to this question with some humility. He could think about mm-hmm. it. He could he could mm-hmm. you know ponder it. Um, especially now that it's really clear that the whole Republican Party is fucked, all of it, if top to bottom, side to side. The whole party is exactly what liberals has been saying it was for decades. So Absolutely. what is 
So, yep. the, but that's Steve Schmidt, the calm Steve Schmidt, the the, the thoughtful sort of humble Steve Schmidt, the, the, the little bit of grace is the product of the imagination of wishful thinkers. There is no such person because the other Steve Schmidt showed up. And this is the real Steve Schmidt. This is the guy who just last year ripped off his own microphone, stormed off the set of his own podcast, and then burned down his own podcast because someone asked him a question about Howard Schultz. <laughs> Blew it all up and stomped off. Now, you remember who Howard, Howard Schultz was, right? Howard yeah, Schultz. he's the Starbucks guy who wanted to run for president yeah. until his, unfortunately, his bad back got in the way. And that's too bad. I mean, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry for anyone that suffers from that. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, on his podcast, one of his podcast colleagues wanted to talk about, uh, talk with Steve Schmidt about Howard Schultz's tax policy. Right. And, and economic Sch policy. And what was he going to do? And Steve Schmidt was unprepared for that question. Yes even though he was the campaign manager of this particular campaign. Yeah. Well, and, and Howard um, Schultz's campaign was always a vanity campaign. It was always yeah. a, a doomed third party operation. And the only thing it could have done would make the inevitable democratic nominees life more difficult. Right. You know, a, right. a vote for Howard Schultz would have been a vote for Trump and Steve right. Schmidt knew that. So, yeah. and so Steve Schmidt had spent months you know, building up his, his credentials as a principled opponent of Donald Trump. Donald Trump's a menace. He's a cancer. He, Steve Schmidt's a very eloquent guy. He made the case over and over and over again, even while just sort of turning up his nose at the socialists on the left, the Bernie Sanders on the left. And he threw all of that overboard, uh, abandoned the fight against Trump to- For money. Uh, for money. <laughs> and lost his job at MSNBC once a sufficient yeah. quantity of money was on the table. He just walked away from his principles and went off and picked up a paycheck until that money ran out. And then he came back to MSNBC and everyone at MSNBC- agreed to forget it ever happened. That's how much principle Steve Schmidt has. He's willing to throw it overboard for the right amount of money. So that was the guy who showed up. And Steve Schmidt, I'm going to take this very personally because I think they're talking about me, frankly, um, unloaded on me with both barrels. Well, uh, I think the question I think the question was was referring to you. I oh, do I'm, think I'm, the question I'm was referring was, to, to you. Yeah, I, I, I listened to it. I was like, Oh, she is asking about the people on the left who have continually questioned the uh, reasonableness of trusting the Lincoln Project mm -hmm. with the future of the Democratic Party mm -hmm. have been us and a handful. And there yes. and there are others. Oliver Willis, yeah. Steve, uh, Steve M at yeah. No More Mr. Nice no, Blog. There yeah. are there are a handful. I'm sorry if I've left other people out. I know there are mm -hmm. other people. Um not Chris Hayes. But those, <laughs> those, they, and all of them fit, frankly, I'm, and, and I'm sorry to make, put you in a box with other people, Drew yeah, Class, because you're one of a kind. Already... The, the box is this, bloggers, writers, people who have blogged through the Bush administration. Yes, that's fair. Yeah. And watched from the Bush administration to the Tea Party to the total rebranding, to all of the racism of the Tea Party. Yep, yep. And just totally forgetting that George W. Bush ever existed. Yep. And then winding up with leaping from Tea Party, which included a humongous component of birtherism uh -huh. and racism, mm -hmm. into a very seamless leap to Donald Trump. Right. King the, of the birthers. Straight, straight path. An absolutely straight, straight path. Straight and path. And this, this was always a, the base was always a monster that a certain level of DC elite thought they were controlling. Right. They could feed and, them all they know, wanted. They, fu all they funded them and Fox News was going to tell them what to do and how to vote. And right. so it'll be fine. And that, that, and that yeah. Rush Limbaugh worked for them. It turned out they right. worked for Rush Limbaugh. They, they were, were for, they and that the base was going to revolt when the person that they were at the base was asked to vote for was Jeb Bush. Right. Because they had been told that they could erase the Bushes right. from their voting record. 
and pretend that they that never happened. Mm -hmm. And then Jeb comes on the scene as the front runner. It's like, oh no, no we're no, not no, making no. that mistake again. We're no, no, we're no, no. we're dumb, but we're not stupid. Well, what about Marco Rubio, who's like a younger, dumber version of Jeb? No, right. he's no, Floridian. No. He's Floridian and and dumb as toast and yeah. and establishment. And, and he's definitely going to win, according to. And Dave he's Cook. definitely never going to embarrass us no. if with his establishment vote. Yeah. You know, being in, but we're done voting for establishment Republicans. We're going to vote for somebody who speaks Fox News lingo all day long, yes. is as racist as we are, and makes us feel good because he makes liberals cry. And is out and proud about it. And right. yeah, I'm in that box of people who started blogging during the Bush administration, during the right. depths of Bush administration, and right. who has a political memory that extends back to Nixon, who, who, who has yep. seen, who, who knows that, that in this regard, um, Stuart Stevens is right. The, the road to Trump is 50 years long. I, right. I, we said this before on this podcast. This is not the fourth year of the Trump administration. This is the 40th year of the Reagan revolution. Absolutely. And, and, Absolutely. The, and the excuses you hear from never Trumpers like, I wasn't there. I never, apparently they never heard of Rush Limbaugh. They never heard of New Cambridge. So, uh, so I'm among the people who will gladly take any ally I can find who won't fucking lie to me, insult my intelligence by lying to me, who wants to pretend the past never happened because we got here by pretending the past never happened, by be, by allowing people to erase the past. I'm not going to let it happen again, at least in, in and, my household. And as, as, a, as a, an aside, because I think it is an aside, let's play Elise Jordan right now. Okay. As an example of how to do it and mm -hmm. how to gain for for whatever. And you, you have all kinds of caveats in your forgiveness. I understand I that. She, she must never lie to you again. Right. Um, right. <laughs> You get, you but get Elise one. Jordan, Elise Jordan, last Sunday on the AM Joy show, mm -hmm. uh, was asked about Ronna Romney McDaniel, the chairman of the RNC, who was being totally loyal to Donald Trump on the Sunday shows on the Fox News Sunday, and how dare anyone question Donald Trump's love for America? Blah blah blah. All right, and so the host asked, "We'll play this." Do do Republicans actually believe the crap that's coming out of Ron or Romney McDaniel's mouth? Right. Or are they just serving the purpose of getting Trump reelected? OK, and here's her answer. Elise, I'm going to come to you um, because you um, are you're not still in the Republican Party or are you? But you just. No. OK. I so left uh, around the time that Roy Moore was uh, given. That's Brandy right. Brand from the Republican and, National Committee when Rona made that move. And so I wanted I, I, I wanted to come to you first in that it, these are folks who are, remain in the Republican Party. Are they doing what they're doing simply because they have to defend the president or do they actually believe the words that are coming out of their mouths? Right now, you see Republicans upholding the power structure, and they have cast their lot. They have determined that they are going full-fledged with Trump. And so Rona Romney McDaniel wants to see the RNC succeed in down-ballot races and in the presidential. And so they've cast their lot. You can— uh, see how facts change. You can see no matter what really happens. But it just it really reminds me a lot of when we were stuck uh, defending the Iraq war during some of the worst times. And I think it's unfortunate I was you know part of it as part of the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. But we could have leveled more with the American public about what the ground reality was. And so I really just have very uh, bad deja vu to those days and have watched that mind meld just locked down on the party winning at all costs no matter the facts be damned okay so so you heard her take responsibility in that clip right the for, iraq war the bush, happened for the iraq war happened the bush we did not level happened. with the american people and i did i was part of that and right. i feel a sense of deja vu for the line that's going on now that's right. that is a mea culpa right there right and and that all, helps her her credibility tremendously with yes, me. With me, and as if my opinion matters. I mean, I'm, I'm a voter. <laughs> I, have a, I have a podcast. And there are people who listen to us, and that's great. But now I want you to read because we we don't have the right to grab from the uh, the podcast with friends question. like these podcasts. No, uh, no. But you transcribed it. I'd like you to read what. Allow me. Allow me if you Steve would. Steve Schmidt. 
the wow. Steve Schmidt Drift Glass Theater here. <laughs> Remind, and I can't do it in Steve Schmidt's kind of whiny voice. You know, like I'm trying to take a dump and it's not coming out right. Um, <clears throat> but but imagine, you know, Steve Schmidt's got a big bald head like I do, but he always looks like an unexploded grenade because he has one setting and that is just fury. And it's always nice when the fury is directed at someone you dislike. Mm-hmm. But he really, really can't stand the idea of anyone bringing up the past and yeah, asking and, him. And like, he's an articulate guy most of sure the time, is. too. Sure yeah. But he's yeah. had months or years to sort of pop, think this through. He works with Stuart Stevens. He knows this shit's out there. And to jump ahead to the end of my concluding comments, this is why never Trumpers, with one exception that I know of, will never, ever allow themselves to be in a venue where anybody like me can ask them questions about their past. Right. Because they, yeah. they are absolutely freaked out when people say, you know, there was a there was a Republican Party before 2016 and you were involved in it. And this was a what? Why didn't you notice that? Why didn't you do something about that back when it was, you know, a small, a small speck on the radar on the on the X-ray and not consuming the entire party? What? And their answers are all either cartoonish or in this case, furious. So Steve Schmidt. Hostile. Hostile re- is the word I would use. Steve Schmidt yeah. responds, let's just say to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess my reaction is to the smugness and the sanctimony of it being the question. And that's so me. I am smug and sanctimonious. You got me there, Steve. Makes me want to respond with a colorful colloquialism from my native New Jersey that begins with go and ends with yourself. So go fuck yourself to anyone who asks me about my past. There you go. That's just selling me on the credibility. Then, <laughs> then Steve, good old Steve, goes all the way in on the political coward's favorite all-occasion area denial weapons. Wait Straw- a minute. Let me guess. Let me guess. Yeah. Hmm. You know, both sides. Oh, class. God. Oh, God. It's so true. <laughs> Straw men and both sides do it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. He, tell, he, he talks a lot about how one po- – anyone who thinks that one political party is 100% virtuous and the other political party is 100% evil is, quote, being a moron. Well, nobody's making that argument, so I don't know who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. But it turns out, in fact, it wasn't Steve that fucked everything up. It was me. Oh. Because, because people like me are, quote, precisely the type of people that explain the reciprocal tribalism that's gotten us into this fucking disaster. So it wasn't Steve. And he fault. said fucking then. He didn't. He, did. he didn't. Steve said, okay. He's he's on a not on a broadcasting, so he's a little. No. He lets his his hair that isn't there down a little bit. Well, he wouldn't say go fuck yourself, but he would say fucking right. in a second instance. But it's, okay. it's people like me who created the reciprocal tribalism. You know, reciprocal tribalism. But we voted for Obama to be a cooperative, <laughs> and you voted, and your party nominated the fucking king of the birthers. But you know, somehow both sides are to blame for this, but. But we know that one thing, Steve Schmidt has nothing to do with this. He doesn't even he never Tribalism. Heard of it. Tribalism yeah. is when you don't want racists to run our government so, and you would like equality to be part of it. So okay. Exactly how bad am I? Well, I'm somewhere between Charlie Kirk and Nazi book burners. <laughs> he I, did, I okay, read read that quote. Read that I know quote. that because I have as much disdain for a left wing nut as for a right wing nut, and a book burner is a book burner. So, you know, he is because he doesn't have any other response. He's he's a small, petty, thin skinned asshole who can't take the slightest fucking responsibility for what he's done with his entire fucking life. So he's got to get mad at the person asking the question, which in this case. So what, I, I just want to get this. I just re- want to get mm-hmm. this straight, because part of what you're doing now mm-hmm. in responding to him is and I, I pardon my language laying your larger cod on the table it okay is. and uh, some of this is just one one testosterone after against another true but i want to just get i i want to get back to taking steve schmidt at his word uh-huh. and that he is answering a question about us right about liberals who do not feel that they can trust never trumpers to represent the interests of America long term. Mm-hmm. I think that was I think that's a fair assessment because of because we can't no, trust them. We can't trust them because they won't take ownership of their own past. They won't right. even well, that's not happened. that was not part of Anna Marie Cox's question, but I'm trying to rephrase Anna Marie Cox's question because mm-hmm. it was I think her question was about us, which is liberals don't trust you 
Lincoln Project. Be- and you're right. It's because they won't take ownership of their past. Right. But Period. how do you, and how do you respond to that? And Steve Schmidt's answer was, "Fuck you." No, first of all, number one, fuck you. Number two, uh, both sides. Both mm-hmm. sides are equally bad, and the the book burners on the left are just as bad as the book burners on the right. Mm-hmm. And w- what is responsible for this horrendous mess that we have gotten ourselves ourselves into is dual tribalism. Right. Me. That was his answer. Right. Well, then, <laughs> I, but if I may, he goes yeah. on. He can't okay. stand the illiberalism of the hardcore left. That's me. Um, and his excuse is, I was a Jack Kemp Republican. I come from the northeast of the country, which was filled with liberal Republicans at one point in time. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, well, well, you're right. And glaciers yeah. once extended all the way to the Ohio Valley at one point in time. <laughs> but what about during your you know, entire adult lifetime? What was the Republican Party like during your lifetime? And I'm shocked and saddened to say that apparently the northwest part of the country didn't have radio or television. East, northeast. I'm sorry, northeast. I apologize. The northeast portion of the country didn't have radio or television or internet access or television to, or radio uh, newspaper deliveries or any awareness of Newt Gingrich or Wayne LaPierre or Tom mm-hmm. DeLay or Jerry mm-hmm. Falwell or Carl Rove or Grover Norquist or Bill O'Reilly or Lee Atwater or Phyllis Schlafly until 2015. When they suddenly discovered <laughs> right. this whole fucking Republican Party has been out there this whole time. And oh, my God, how did that ever happen? Which is shocking and sad. Um, yeah. And then then Steve says, one of the things that I think is badly overdue in this country, overdue in this country, Blue Gal, is, mm-hmm. is something, you know, I have, you know, tried to do over recent years is to understand where other people are coming from. What informs their point of view? That's what he never understood. What informs what we both sides need to reach out and understand what the other side really thinks and what they're what they really believe. And my response is, I have no trouble understanding what Republicans where they're coming from because for the last several decades they have never shut the fuck up about it. Right. You can't no. turn on an AM radio without hearing their points of view gushing out or the. The Fox News that plays at the garage or the barbershop all day long. Or, Three or the, times a week in my local paper, there's a Trumper in the letters to the editor section. Well, and this is the paper that syndicates Ann Coulter and Mark Thiessen right. because they know right. goddamn well what Republicans think and what they want. Absolutely. And even yeah. at civic events or local diners or the grocery store or the post office, out here in the real world where Steve Schmidt doesn't live, Republicans have never had the, been the slightest bit shy when it comes to sharing their thoughts about Hillary Clinton or the yeah. Kenyan usurper. And I don't, so I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. We have been, we've known what these people want. We've known what they're like. And we've warned you for 30 years where they were taking your party. And you told us to sit down and shut up. So Steve Schmidt continues. The American political system is built on concepts such as including incrementalism, and accommodation and compromise. And we're going to need some of that in this country. We're going to need some grace after this period. And and Barack Obama started laughing his head off. I at just, this point, I was like, right? oh my God, we had two different eight years ex- experiments in what it would be like to elect a Democratic president who would be perfectly happy to accommodate Republicans. One mm-hmm. was Bill Clinton, who was mm-hmm. impeached, the government was shut down, and he was hunted like an animal. The other one was Barack so Obama. So was his wife. So was yep. his wife. And, and one was a Barack Obama. And we got eight years of Steve Schmidt's Republican Party, sabotage, sedition, out and proud, unhinged racism, stolen Supreme Court seats, birtherism. And then surprise, surprise, they nominated the king of the birthers. And elected. And elected. Yep. So I'm sitting here and, and I, I got the answer to my question, I got to say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I said at the beginning, this is why you will almost never find a never Trumper in any forum where a smug, sanctimonious, book-burning zealot like me might <laughs> ask them inconvenient questions about their past. <laughs> because they'll go ape shit and walk off. They yeah, can't handle yeah. it. And if you, I mean, really, if you are going to be the badass, big dick swinging Lincoln Project, we're going to take on goddamn Donald Trump. We're going to take on the goddamn leader of the country. And we're going to back him his ass down. Great. And you can't handle a few fucking questions from some nobody bloggers in the middle of nowhere without losing your shit. Right. What right. does that say about 
what your you, manhood, your manhood <laughs> about what you, what you are terribly afraid of. You are so yeah. fucking terrified of people popping the hood and looking at the past and going, wait a minute. The, the history didn't begin in 2016. There was a long history there. That is some, and it, it is bizarre to me that someone who is so adamant and furious about not talking about the past and taking no responsibility for a party that he dedicated his whole life to is someone you think you can trust. Yeah. I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I know. It's okay. You, you, Come down from your horse for a moment yeah. because Bill Crystal came out today with yes, a plan. He, he has a plan. A plan for the new conservative movement of the Republican Party and how oh. we're going to rebuild. Oh, that's good. I, I was worried that we wouldn't rebuild the Republican Party because that's just what the country needs right now is a and, new, 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 <laughs> new, new Republican Party. But but let's be clear. The the thing that is there's something that's missing from Bill Crystal's model for the new Republican Party. The, the existence of Republican voters. Yes, that's yes. it. Yes, <laughs> I, that's what I thought it might be. That is the closest to the uh, sort of place, the island where you live, Drew Glass. The closest that anyone in the Never Trump movement has sailed to that. Yes. Is Charlie Sykes asking, maybe we have a voter problem? Yes, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't, we don't. Although, you know, Charlie Sykes. Charlie Sykes is, a, is a, an AM radio host until he dies. And so an AM conservative. So he's very affable with everyone on his show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when um, when Stuart Stevens on his show, he'll, he'll shake his head and go, oh, that's really, that's sad about the Republican Party being, uh, you know, fucked up for, you know, 40 mm-hmm. years. And then he'll pivot right back around. And this week he'll say, you know. In the last four short years, things have really gotten bad. <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. wait a minute, which is it? Is it yeah. everything was fine up until 2016 when you discovered Republicans in the Republican Party? Or has this problem been going on for 40 years? And he won't, yeah. I know which one he thinks. I know, yeah. which, one, I know which one gets him to sleep at night. But right. it is bizarre right. and, and yet not bizarre to hear that I will say whatever I need to say during an interview to do the interview. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But but which leads me to believe he doesn't believe anything. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't have any actual. Well, or he's able he's able to um, bifurcate or compartmentalize him, yeah. himself as an interviewer to do the job. And I get that. That's that's professionalism. Yeah. yeah. However, because you know, me interviewing another knitter would be a different Fran from me talking to you. It, that's, you know, that's I very would true. I would nearly swear nearly as much. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but and I and I do, am impressed that Charlie Sykes never, ever, ever supported Donald Trump. Yes. Didn't, didn't toy with it. Didn't say, okay, we'll support him now that he's president. He never did. And actually quit radio, you know, in January of 2017, he quit. So, well, and, um, but why didn't he support Donald Trump? He thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. He thought Hillary Clinton was going to win, but when Trump won, he didn't try to make peace with That's it. That's absolutely true. And, and That's, I, that is to his credit. I will give him that, that much credit. But I also think that once you have bought yourself out of the game, mm-hmm. you're kind of stuck. The, a lot of these never Trumpers yeah. just oh, yeah. declared yeah. openly yeah. that Don, because they really did believe that Donald Trump was going to lose and lose badly. And they were going to be the ones who'd be asked to come in and run the party. Pick up the pieces, right. And that right. never happened. And they, they were stuck out in the cold. And well, and they were looking forward to the 2018 midterms as a time when we could really solidify the Senate because the backlash to a Hillary Clinton presidency was going to mm-hmm. be awesome, right? So I mean, they're always thinking two or three elections ahead. So, well, And, and, and like, we've got to start doing that, by the way. And like Glenn um, Beck, you know, who was a never, never Trumper ever, ever, ever. Oh, the wind shifted. You know what? That yeah. Donald Trump is not such a bad guy. Right. You know, right. The, a lot of them got caught out on that bet. And Yep. Yep. And and switched and and Charlie Sykes didn't. Charlie right. Sykes, uh, to his credit, did not say, "Well, let's work with this." He well, didn't do that. And here's a here's a bizarre contrast between Bill Crystal. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, as I said, I listened to lots of Stuart Stevens podcasts and read everything he's written for the last four years or so in preparation for him coming on the show, which he was never going to do. <laughs> which is never, never going to do. But I'm ready. I am fucking ready. And I, and I wouldn't be mean, but I would be um, blunt, and I'd ask for some honesty on his part. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But Bill Crystal has said, of oh, Bill Crystal, um, Stuart Stevens has said dozens of times that if you put a gun to my head and ask me to tell you what a conservative believes, I'd say, shoot me, because I have no idea. 
Everything mm-hmm. that we said we believed turned out to be bullshit. We don't care about right. deficits. We don't care about immigration. We don't care about this country. We don't care about responsibility or ethics or values or anything. These, these are all things that have just been thrown away by the, by the Republican Party, not just eased away from, but we now believe the exact opposite on all this shit. We now love Russia. So I could not tell you what the hell conservatives even believe it. That's on one side. On the other side are a whole bunch of conservatives, everybody from Andrew Sullivan to, uh, to Bill Kristol, who think that they, they're the real conservative. Their conservatism, wherever I'm standing, that's conservatism. So Bill Kristol is trying to reconstitute a movement that his partner can't even define in terms of what they hate or what they like. And that's because Bill Kristol can only exist in a terrarium made of conservatism, mm-hmm, in a mm-hmm, contained mm-hmm. hothouse environment where he knows what the four walls are and the floor and ceiling. At the moment, there is no conservative movement in this country because it was always a fucking sham. And he's trying to make one up and then reverse engineer himself into yes. the leadership of it. Yes. And just like he did with Project for a New American yeah. Century. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Drift class, there was a town hall this week with Donald Trump. Oh yeah. yeah. And it didn't go well for him. Well, you know, that depends on which which TV show you're watching, honey. If you're <laughs> If you're watching they Gunsmoke. They did mention it, it on Fox and Friends again. Yeah, yeah. It, well, no. <laughs> but they had Trump on for 47 minutes um, this Lord week. Ingram did say he was ambushed by you oh, know, ordinary she people. Oh, about it. That's and right. My, it might have built, it might, as, might as well have been, been run by the DNC. It was so bad. You know, George Stephanopoulos, uh-huh. a Clinton administration guy. Yeah. Like, no, this was, this was a bunch of people who were ordinary citizens, some of whom voted for Trump, some of whom weren't, some of whom were in the middle who were invited to ask him questions. Yeah, voters, <laughs> and, actual voters. And as was described by many, many, many sources, including Talking Points Memo, it was just a firehouse, fire hose of lying. It was just yeah. one lie Bale after another. Too. Yeah. It was yeah. a fucking, and, and the reviews came in. If you, I, I, I grabbed a few of them if you're interested in, in reading them off for our sure, listeners. Sure, go but, right ahead. Go right uh, ahead. Just a fire hose of lying, Trump's town hall widely roasted as a train wreck. Uh, President Donald Trump ventured from the safe space of Fox News to a considerably more challenging town hall hosted by ABC News in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That was Talking Points Memo. CNN. He was lying through his teeth. <laughs> Voters stood up and yeah. spoke the truth to President uh, on, on Tuesday night. And Trump had a very hard time coming out of the Fox News bubble to face real questions. CNN. Trump's town hall did not go well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Trump's ABC town hall revealed a president disconnected from reality, says Vox. He faced tough questions from voters and had few answers. That was Vox, not was Vox. Fox. That was yes. Vox. Vox with a miss a V. Uh, Trump faces a great peril outside the Fox News bubble, says the Washington Post. President Trump deigned to take questions from at a town hall on Tuesday night, and the verdict of his propagandists is in. Trump was treated with hideous unfairness, even have he man, even as he managed to convert the spectacle into a triumph through sheer force of his forthrightness and deep benevolence. I Jesus. <laughs> that's not what I saw, but you know, hey, that's what they saw. Uh, the Guardian, uh, Trump squirms in TV spotlight as voters pin him down on COVID health race. Uh, the president stepped outside the Fox News bubble, et cetera, et cetera. There's and a so, lot of that Fox News bubble mentioned. Yeah. 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 And I and think it, that's that's a result of everybody reading the book about Fox. Yeah. Uh, well, it's also just reality. I mean, this is the same Fox News bubble that had Carl Rove declaring um, Mitt Romney, the winner, yep. um, when he had clearly lost the yeah. election because yeah. Yeah. inside and and now that um, uh, Roger Ailes is is uh, dead and uh, unmourned by anyone with an ounce of decency, yeah, um, it, it's I, just, I think the RNC really misses him, though I really do. Yeah, well, he's the only one who yeah. could you know take a whip and a chair to these people and at least line yeah. them up so they're all telling the same lie at the same time. Ah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, I want to talk for a minute about Danielle Pletka. <laughs> oh, please, please. You know, don't again, don't threaten me with a good time, Blue Gal. Leopard yeah. skin wearing Danielle Pletka, who is a lobbyist for the petrochemical industry and, oh, uh, and so has much had more. many had she's had quite a history of uh, making money off of very bad decisions. And uh, she's now has had an op ed in The Washington Post this week. Yes. And and. 
this the thing you have in our notes, this is the literal title of it, correct? Yes, that's the, the literal title I, of her okay. op-ed in the, the Washington Post. The literal title of her op-ed, which she may not have written the title. I right. I, I understand that. But this mm-hmm. is the title that the Washington Post put on this op-ed. I can't stand Trump, but Democrats may force me to vote for him. Yeah. So we know how much money Daniel Pletka brings in a year. Well, and- uh, it's over. It's over four hundred thousand dollars because mm-hmm. her ta- she's worried her taxes are going to go well, up and, for and sure. Someone I don't remember who calls this sort of thing the just the tip Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're terrible, Drift. I, I, I didn't invent um, that. I just repeated it. And if you were <laughs> an innocent member of the general public, you may only know uh, Ms. Pletka by her bio in the Washington Post, which has her as a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Uh, you may also know her as the creepy robot sounding lady in ridiculous glasses who for some reason has a revert reserved seat on meet the press. Yes, she does. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, Steve M at no Mr. Nice blog, who we mentioned earlier in this podcast, uh, took the additional and I must say cruelly unfair step of remembering things um, <laughs> and looking up Miss Pletka on Wikipedia. Uh, mm-hmm. And he wrote, uh, on Twitter, where everyone can look at it, which is, again, terribly cruel and unfair. She's a former staffer to the most racist monster in the U.S. Senate, the late Jesse Helms. She's a former champion of Iraq fraudster Ahmed Chalabi. She was an advocate of regime change in Iran. And she hosts a podcast with torture enthusiast Mark Thiessen. Oh, the Mark Thiessen Daniel Pletka podcast. That's yeah. got to be a, an amazing yeah. hour. Short of <laughs> chewing aluminum while drinking lemon juice, I can't imagine <laughs> more passing a more pleasant hour Ew. than that. But Ew. this, this, you know, as someone said, this is basically um, Hugh Hewitt in a dress. This is a, yeah. a complete oh, yeah. replicant of that kind of bottom feeding, robotic, yep. I don't see anything wrong. Now, you know that she's going to vote for Donald Trump. Yeah, no one is going to force her to vote for no. Donald Trump. She is voting for Donald Trump. But why say I'm going to vote for Donald Trump when I can turn around and blame the dirty, commie, filthy liberals for making me vote for Donald Trump? Yeah. And this yeah. is what she actually wrote. She fears that Joe Biden would be a figurehead president, incapable of focus or leadership, who would run a teleprompter presidency with the words drafted by his party's hard left ideologues. I fear that a Congress of Democrats controlling both houses, almost certainly ensured by a Biden victory in November, would begin an assault on the institutions of government that preserve the nation's small D democracy. Who knows? Biden might actually steal a Supreme Court seat. That that could. What institutions of government are going to be left standing after four years of Trump? That's. I really want to sit her down and and ask her that. Yeah. Well, does she know what? Does she know who's in charge of the Bureau of Land Management right now? A coal lobbyist is in charge of the Interior Department. Betsy DeVos is in charge of the Education Department. Exactly what institutions of government? You mean your taxes, Danielle? Of course. That's what you mean. Your low taxes for rich people. That's the only thing you're talking about. Once again, Blue Gal takes out a a big Sharpie and underlines why these people will never sit down with anyone who remembers the past. Because (laughs) it would just, you you shred them in 30 seconds. And they they run this bullshit. And I'm not comparing Daniel Pletka with like Stay Steve Schmidt, except I am. In that they both (laughs) feel really free to lie about a lot of important shit because they know they're protected by the Beltway media from ever having to sit next to somebody who's going to say, but you're lying. And here's how. So Daniel Pluck uh, uh, continues. Uh, this uh, abolition of, uh, of government institutions could be, could include the abolition of the filibuster, creating an executive legislative monolith of unlimited power, an increase in the number of Supreme court seats to ensure a liberal supermajority passage of devastating economic measures, such as the green new deal, nationalized healthcare, the dismantling of U.S. borders, the introduction of socialist-inspired measures that will wreck an economy still recovering from the pandemic shutdown. Again, Danielle, don't threaten me with a good time. That yeah. all sounds delightful. Um, but it's it's so ludicrous. I mean, it just this is the sort of thing that Trump does. Just make shit up that has no basis in fact at all. There's no evidence to support any of it and shove it down her pants and claim, the scary thing in my pants is making making me vote for Donald Trump. Well, and let's be clear that there are at least some staffers in the Washington Post who had had enough at this point yes. with this op-ed. <laughs> because on the same day they published Alexandra P- 
Petri's yes. um, parody yeah, of, this of, a, of, of basically the Pletka op-ed. Yes. Plet, again, Pletka's op-ed was titled, I never considered voting for Trump in 2016. I may be forced to vote for him this year. That mm-hmm. was the updated title uh, later in the afternoon at, instead of liberals may force me, Democrats may force me to do it. I may be forced. They put it in the passive mm-hmm. language. Uh, Alexander a- Alexander Petri's op-ed parody was, I can't believe you're forcing me to vote for Trump, which I definitely didn't already want to do. <laughs> and it's very good, but it is word for word a parody of what Daniel Pletka seriously wrote. Let's talk about George Soros, who's yes. been trending on Twitter. Let's yeah. talk about George Soros because, well, let's talk about Newt Gingrich talking about George Newt Soros. Newt Gingrich, yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, there's, I'm guessing, a new internal memo at Fox News mm-hmm. about the uh, uh, letting raging anti-Semites have access to cameras um, and yeah. saying crazy anti-Semitic things um, that that might actually be you know, bad for ratings. Um, so this was it a more- occurred to me that they might have gotten a phone call from Jared Kushner, who does business with George Soros, yeah. or who has done business with George Soros in the past, which was exposed by the Rupert Murdoch Wall Street Journal in 2017 as being mm-hmm. one of the things that Jared Kushner did not disclose in his security clearance memos. Oh, so many things. So many. <laughs> I things. know that's a layer cake right there. I understand yeah. that. But it is possible that George Soros having as much money as he does and pledging half a billion dollars to refugee relief, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he's got money to do that. Uh, somebody may, somebody on the right may have decided we really don't want to make this guy our enemy. Right. Um, and, and also, we- it's just bad. It's a bad look to be anti-Semitic when we're so pro-Israel all over here, you yeah. know? Someone might notice. Yeah, someone might Um, notice that while Jared is pretending to make peace in the Middle East while ignoring that the Palestinian people exist, mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, that we're being all anti-Jew over here on Fox. Yeah. That makes the whole process so much easier, doesn't it? Without, you know, having the other party present. Without having to deal with the issues that are causing a lack of peace in the Middle East. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, Newt Gingrich tried to say that the number one problem in almost all the cities is George Soros elected left-wing anti-police pro-criminal district attorneys. And the host of uh, Outnumbered said, I'm not sure we need to bring George Soros into this. Yeah. <laughs> and Newt decided to go full German on that right. one and right. say, so it's verboten? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Poor Newt uh... been canceled yet again. Just in case you think there is anything anything called the cancel culture. Uh-huh. Um, Newt Gingrich still has a seat on broadcast cable well, news. Yes. And, and Newt Gingrich in for decades has always been about as despicable a person as you can get without becoming an actual spree killer. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. If you have a long enough memory and if you have the guts to use it, remember dare to remember things, people um, you may remember that a quarter of a century ago, Newt Gingrich singled out Susan Smith, a South Carolina mother who drowned her two children, as a sign of America's, quote, sick society and the need to vote Republican. Quote, I think people want to change, and the only way you get changed is to vote Republican. So he has been trying to tie liberalism to welfare, to depravity. To child murder. To child murder, to treason for, yeah. for 30 years. For 25, His whole 30 years. shtick is a noun of verb blame Democrats. Right. So he, he blamed the shooting of Gabby Giffords mm-hmm. on liberals. Yes. That's his go to. That's so, his go to. Yeah. So obviously there is no cancel culture because New King still has a seat at the <laughs> table just somewhere. A regular, and, and his wife is the ambassador to the Vatican, which so, is just, yeah. So if you have a question about, if you want to know why the fuck is Newt Gingrich still on uh, TV and still being interviewed, the one person you don't want to ask is Steve Schmidt, because apparently (laughs) he has never heard of Newt Gingrich or any of the other people that have been prominent leaders of his fucking party for the last 30 years. Now, see, I got back up up on my high horse. I'm sorry. You did. You did. Um, We are still, we are still fundraising for our bat, uh, 
problem that is going on in our house. Uh, we are still fundraising for that. If you can afford to support us on that, we appreciate it. And Ten Grain wrote me this week uh-huh. about uh, a very funny story. They, he and his family, when they were young, stayed at a uh, camp house, like you know, out in the woods. But it was a house and a lodge uh, or a cabin or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a cabin in the woods. And uh, there was a bat in the house. And uh, Ten Grain's dad caught it. And to be hilarious and funny, he set it free in the upstairs bedroom where the children slept. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. To try to show them, ha, 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 I'm going to tell you scary stories. And look, this bat is flying around your room. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't catch it again. (laughs) (laughs) And for apparently for several weeks afterwards, all of the children were sleeping in the bedroom with mom and dad on yeah. sleeping bags in the floor mm-hmm. while this bat got the entire upstairs bedroom to himself. <laughs> that bat had a great summer. <laughs> it's called karma, Mr. Ten Grain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ten Grain's dad didn't live that down. No. Uh, well, you wouldn't, you know, would you? No. No. <laughs> no. no. We don't go bad. But, but as I as I told Ken Gray, but you know, it's a great story. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the important thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, Ten Grain, a friend of the pod. He's at Mock Paper Scissors. You should go visit his blog, which is he's another real old school blogger. He's been around forever. Yeah, he's, he's the sole owner of Peggy Noonan. Yeah. Oh yeah, he owns Peggy Noonan. Yeah. Anyone who writes about Peggy Noonan has to hat tip Ten Grain. Yes. And and Peggy Noonan and her Mai Tais. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's read a national news roundup. Sure. In the uh, category of subpoenas for thee, but not for me, Eric Trump says he's willing to be interviewed by the New York AG's office, Attorney General's office, but not until after the election. He gets to decide that? Yes. He's, and a, no- private, I, he's a private citizen. He's supposed to be I, just running the businesses. I don't want to get interviewed. His wife is getting 15 grand a month. I, from maybe, the Trump campaign. Maybe in January? I don't know. I'm Eric. Olivia Troy, former Homeland Security Advisor to Vice President Mike Pence. So she's not a coffee girl. No. Nope. Okay? Not yet. She she now says that she will be supporting Joe Biden because of Trump's flat-out disregard for human life during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. She also said that Donald Trump was kind of glad that the uh, virus had taken hold because he didn't like shaking hands of those people. Those dirty, those dirty, filthy those dirty people. dirty Trump supporters, yeah. <laughs> who love him like they love, yeah. like, uh, as they say, a glutton loves his lunch. Yeah. Um, Donald Trump again claimed this week that the coronavirus, coronavirus will disappear without a vaccine and that the U.S. would develop herd mentality, which... yeah. <laughs> Joanne uh, Reed tonight. We're yeah. recording this on Thursday night. She just said paging Dr. Freud. Yeah. yeah. Herd mentality. Yeah. yeah. We're already there. We're already there. <laughs> and but then she then she ran the stats. And it's like if if you if you go down this road, if this really is let everybody catch it, 70% of people get it, and then eventually you're gonna, you know, have a even though there's no evidence that you would actually sustain your immunity, that the total the death toll from that, just statistically, would be around 7 million people would have to die for Donald Trump's plan of doing nothing whatsoever to work. And apparently, well, and he's that doesn't okay even, with that. That doesn't even, Strickless, that doesn't even factor in the fact that what scientists and, and animal husbandry people are talking about with herd immunity involves a vaccine. Right. That's right. <laughs> it, herd immunity people... is when you give enough cows the shot. Right. That you really don't have to worry about other cows that you're not able to reach your horses out in the paddock or right. whatever. There's a few For strays. Wild horses in the paddock. Yeah. yeah, that you're not able to give them a shot. You kind of don't have to worry about it because there's enough of them that have been immunized that it's not going to spread. And, right. and there won't be this. You won't have to worry about it. That's what herd immunity is. It's about giving enough people the vaccine that, not people, animals, the mm-hmm. vaccine that you don't have to worry about the entire herd. And you and you do this on the you know on the range when you're when you're gathering up cattle, cr- driving them across the desert or whatever. It it, it is a vaccine thing. Yes. <laughs> herd, herd mentality, on the other hand, yeah. is exhibited at a Trump rally where they wear no masks. Let's every, put it that way. Every time you turn on the television to Fox News, you're watching herd mentality. Herd yeah. mentality. That's yep. it. Uh, 
Trump said America's founders set in motion the unstoppable. I, I am not going to read this. This is, I'm sorry. This is Stephen Miller propaganda. I'm not going to read it. It is. He gave a drugged up Stephen Miller Nazi speech today. And that's Stephen. all you need to know. That included that blue state people want to tear blue down. State people. Blue state, <laughs> the blues. They want to tear down Mount Rushmore. You know, they do. They live for that sort of thing. Yes. They, and then he passed out into a puddle of his own sick. No, he didn't. He did that later, but. He gave a drugged out racist Stephen Miller rambling the the Fuhrer on the worst kind of psycho drugs at the end of his reign speech. And it's on television if you want to go see mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And include uh, teaching critical race theory, which he has no idea what the fuck that is, mm -hmm. is a form of child abuse, the worst kind of child yeah, abuse. Yeah, Howard Zinn is bad. Howard the sixteen nineteen project is uh, all, all bad. Just, we're gonna create we're gonna create a real history. We're gonna indoctrinate our children to believe whites uh earned America yes. <laughs> from God. That's that's what he wants to do. Okay. Bill Barr is rattling off one aggressively insane thing after another so fast it's hard to follow. Uh, Justice Department staff are just like preschoolers voting by mail is the end of democracy. The nationwide COVID lockdown, which there was never any nationwide anything, is just like slavery. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, encouraging federal prosecutors to consider charging protesters with sedition. Mm -hmm. And as I tweeted today, you know, I'm really am somebody that wants to overthrow the Trump government quote I unquote am. peacefully <laughs> I want to do it in November peacefully. I want to do it peacefully I want Bill Barr to go on trial for all of the crimes against this country he's committed all the treason he's committed and I want the last sentencing decision that he has to choose between is whether or not he wants a fucking blindfold <laughs> You you really uh, went there on Twitter on, really, about him. I'm just saying. Blindfold or no blindfold, Bill Barr. Yeah. I'm just saying <laughs> the art of Canley has many admirers in the empire, blue gal. <laughs> <laughs> CDC director, Dr. Robert Redfield, testified that a COVID-19 vaccine won't be widely available until late spring or summer 2021 and that Americans will not return to our regular life until then. He also made a very strong case for a mask. Yes. And said that a mask keeps you safer than a vaccine. He went so far as to say that. Uh, quite yeah. remarkable. It's a piece of cloth. It works. And, and everyone should wear them. Speaking of national mask mandates, Donald Trump criticized Joe Biden for not implementing a national mask mandate, even though Joe Biden is not the president and has no authority to do any such thing. I don't think it's a blower. Oh, go ahead. I, I don't think I think Donald Trump's brain is so rotten at some point. He he doesn't realize he's the president. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. He, he just lapses every now and then. And of course, being a, a piece of shit. His automatic response, his autopilot is find the nearest person to a liberal to blame. So whatever the fuck is wrong is either Obama or Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden. Well, and I'm fighting with Biden. And so it's Biden's fault. And right. I'll just spew out from my mouth that Biden didn't do it. So, right. so how can he complain about me when he didn't? Yes. Uh, a whistleblower complaint accused an ICE detention center of performing unnecessary hysterectories on immigrant women. And the silence on the right is really deafening on that. Uh, you'd think they would care about women's reproductive uh, organs, and they don't. This is this is sterilization surgery on a captive population. Yeah. This is Nazism. This is yeah. absolutely experiment. This is seeing how far and they can people, go. People, we need we need war crimes trials after after this administration's over. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, Michael Caputo is taking a 60-day leave of absence from the Department of Health and Human Services, where he's the chief spokesperson, after accusing government science, scientists of sedition and calling on Trump supporters to arm themselves ahead of the election. He really believes that hit squads are being deployed by the left to kill him. And he says yeah. this shit out loud. He has no medical training. And he, he has was, no medical background. making money as a taxpayer-funded official. Yeah. No, he's just another fascist misfit at the end of the Third Reich who's trying to find a way out. A federal judge has ruled Donald Trump and Postmaster General Louis DeJoy are involved in a politically motivated attack on the efficiency of the Postal Service. DeJoy's operational changes have delayed nearly 350 million pieces, about 7% of first-class mail during the five weeks in which they were effect, 
in effect. And they are now, that change is now stopped by the federal judge. Yeah. Go postal unions. Um, Yay, go postal unions. A federal judge has ruled that Chad Wolf is likely unlawfully serving as acting secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. He shouldn't fucking be there. And who's doing anything about that? Well, who is there to do anything? Can the federal judge order him arrested if he shows up for work? I, I would... I would if I were a federal judge. Yeah, that's what I um, do. And, but Remove but as we've learned from, yeah. from Eric Trump, um, apparently you're allowed to just say, I'm not going to show up in court and no one will come yeah. to your house and kick the door in and drag your you're ass. Not gonna, Chad Wolf didn't show up today for uh, a subpoena from Congress either. Right. Right. Time for people Pro-Trump to teenagers, Pro-Trump teenagers are being paid by a conservative nonprofit to cast doubt about the integrity of the election and mm-hmm. play down the threat from COVID-19 on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's almost like they're on a server farm. It would be irresponsible of me to bring up like the Hitler youth at this point, so I won't. Mm-hmm. Uh, political appointees at the Department of Health and Human Services repeatedly demanded that the CDC revise or delay weekly scientific reports on the coronavirus pandemic that they believed were unflattering to Donald Trump. That's Soviet shit, boys and girls. That's bending science, breaking science, lying about science to make the dear leader feel good. And that has deadly consequences. And everyone involved knows it. You know, the new tagline for this podcast is, we remember... Because we're going to be asked to forget all of this when there's a Democrat in the White House. Yes, we are. And we are no, we not going to forget this. We are not going to forget this. Laura Ingram is going to have all of this shoved right back in her face every day. Even if I have to tattoo myself like the guy in Memento, head to toe, <laughs> with just Daniel Dale's shit, that's what yeah, I'll have to right. do. Yeah. As the West Coast burned, and we are thinking of the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And all of the people dealing with flooding this week in the southeast as well. We're, uh, we're called climate change refugees now. I mean, we have climate right. change refugees in this country now. In the United States. Yep. Yes. Trump, but Trump once again lied about climate change. He smirked about how it'll start getting cooler. You just watch. And I don't think science knows actually. He's getting this shit from Paula White. Yeah. His spiritual advisor, blonde with the big tits, mm-hmm. is telling him, oh, just have faith, Donald. Every, Mr. President, everything will be fine. It's going to all go away. Be positive. Because Jesus coming down, it is, the, it is the worst corruption of a religious message that you can have. It's prosperity gospel. And because her association with the White House is making her money, Paula White is spewing this stuff at a a drugged up, weak minded, you know, stroke victim, frankly, mm-hmm. uh, in the White House. And and he's spewing it back at at officials in California who are dealing with the fires. And if you if you watch him over a period of time, and I don't, I just catch the peaks of the waves. This is clearly someone who is unraveling um, in mm-hmm. real time, oh, yeah. who's losing mm-hmm. losing his mind in real time, who's breaking down in real time, and there's a real panic uh, on the part of the Republican leadership. If they can keep, you know, the parts of him that, that are functional stitched together long enough to sort of make it across the finish line. That's all they care about. So you can expect to see him either completely drugged up on Adderall, talking mm-hmm. a mile a minute bullshit with like white powder spewing out of his nose. Which it just, was. Which it was. Yes. Or like like today, just sort of half awake, staring into space, waxy, just sort of mouthing the things that other people said about America's greatness. And that's what, and, and you and I look at this normal same people look at this and say, Oh, this guy's, this guy's falling apart. This guy, this is a madman at the end of his rope. He's got, you know, he's got nothing left. He's hollowed out and Republicans look at him and see the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's why we can't be in community with these people anymore. We'll see what happens, Drift Glass. We'll see what happens in a certain period uh, I, of time. I think there's some shy Biden voters out there, I really yeah. do, who are terrified to talk to their gun-toting compatriots about their doubts, because mm-hmm. it is like a cult. And the only thing we can count on is that perhaps they will vote by mail from their kitchen table, mm-hmm. seal up that envelope, and not tell anyone they voted for Biden. Yeah, 
Um, I think there are going to be a lot of women who do that. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week we have two Internet Kitties, Casper and Coco, and they like to snuggle together on the bed. Uh, They also like freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Yes. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat or cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Coco and Casper at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. We've been saying that for like nine years now. Yes, we have. It's it's one of our the things. Postal that... Service is a is a very important part of our democracy yeah. and uh, and our republic. We do appreciate them. It's one of the pillars Hashtag, of civilization, baby. Pillars of civilization. Hashtag Save the Post Office. Mm-hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. I especially want to thank people who have written to us in the past two weeks about our show being therapy for them at this very dark time. We've had two or three letters with, from people saying, you know, you are really keeping me going. We want you to know you keep us going. Uh, and we've received some uh, stamps from people. I think I have enough postcard stamps to get me through the election. <laughs> yeah. um, not only from those that people have sent me, but uh, some that I've bought as well. And someone also sent me some more postcards from her collection there's a woman out there that's sending 60 postcards a week yeah that's just remarkable and i'm so grateful to have heard that she's a podcast listener um there's another podcast listener who sent a generous donation on our behalf to betsy dirksen londrigan yes who is the democratic candidate in our district our future congressperson our future congresswoman Mm -hmm. in illinois 13 and Mm -hmm. uh uh, Betsy's mom was very grateful for that donation, mm-hmm. and Betsy got back to us as well through her mom. Yes. Um, you're pretty close to Betsy's mom, or you know her yes. quite well. It, it, it's uh, a small town. So, <laughs> yeah, it is a small town. We are looking forward to hopefully having a Democratic congresswoman uh, come January. And uh, we just want you all to know how much we appreciate you thinking of us. And we are thinking of you guys every single day. We talk about the podcast. We talk about the listeners. Drift Glass goes to the P.O. Box and picks up goodies. And uh, Mm -hmm. we're just very, very grateful to you for um, you thinking of us and uh, supporting us, which uh, is just a miracle. Every day we get a check. uh, We think of that as, wow. (laughs) What a miracle it is that uh, we're able to share with you and you're able to support us. And we so appreciate it. So thank you. And please share our show on social media. Thank you for doing that too. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties have decided to break their silence and come out to warn America that Donald Trump is dangerous. Now buy their book. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.